Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. I know this kind of comes as a surprise because I post a video every 24 hours and I'm changing the schedule now and did not want to wait 36 hours to do that. From now on, you will get to see a video at this time of the day or the night, depending on where you live. The schedule will be as follows. The video will premiere at the following times every day, 5.15 p.m. in UTC, which is Coordinated Universal Time. So you can kind of look it up and then adjust it to your time zone, or you can just record the time when this video premieres. It means it's 9.15 a.m. Pacific Time in the U.S., 12.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10.45 p.m. in India, 5.15 p.m. in London, which is the same as UTC, 6.15 p.m. in Germany, 8.15 p.m. in Turkey, and so on and so forth. All right, without further ado, let's get started. So we do have a circle with radius 2 that sits at the center of a semicircle with radius 3, and then a square, as you see, the green one, with side length x is inscribed in the region shown, we're supposed to find the side length of the square. So, as always with geometry puzzles, well, almost all the time, we need to make some good connections, right? Okay, so I'm gonna start by connecting the point where the circle and the square intersect, it's one of the vertices, basically. I'm gonna take that point and connect it to the center of the circle. So let's go ahead and do that first, okay? And then I'd like to make a segment, basically like a vertical segment that goes through the center of the square. So it's gonna look like this, okay? And I want it to go all the way down, nice. So this is basically the center of the semicircle because our circle is sitting at that point, okay? And then I will make one more connection and then we'll proceed to the solution. All right, cool. Now I'm gonna start here this time and then go to the opposite corner, this one, and then we'll stop there. Okay, why did we do all of this? Because first of all, making connections is important and we're going to build our equations on these connections. Of course, we're gonna be using the Pythagorean theorem to solve uh, the problem, but we need to be able to identify our right triangles here. So we do have two right triangles. If you don't see them clearly, uh, let me go ahead and outline it a little bit more. So here we go. This is one right triangle and this is another right triangle. Okay, what about the lengths? Let's go ahead and label some lengths and see what that looks like. So we're given that the radius of the circle is two. So this length is gonna be two, right? Now the side length for the square is X. So this is X. Since this, uh, this is also X obviously. And this basically is segment, the vertical one from symmetry goes through the center of the square. Therefore, it's gonna cut it equally. So this is going to be half of X. Now we don't know the height, um, not the hypotenuse, we don't know the height here. We know the hypotenuse and the base of this triangle, but let's call this H. And then since the height of the square is X, which is side length, then this piece will be X minus H, right? The leftover piece, nice. And this is also going to be half of x. Nice. Now we do have two right triangles. Hopefully you see you see them, but if you don't, I'm gonna go ahead and shade it for you. Here we go. This is one of them, and this is the other one. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna use those right triangles and the Pythagorean theorem to set up our equations. We're going to get a set of equations, which is a system of equations in uh, two variables. That's gonna be quadratic and we're gonna solve that system, but trust me, the answer is going to be very, very interesting. So stay tuned. Okay, cool. Now, what does the triangles give me? First of all, look at the one on the left, okay? So that gives me x over two squared, and I'll probably switch the pen here. Let's go ahead and use a lighter color, like maybe, I don't know, this one. Okay, this looks like a good one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and write down x over two squared plus h squared, which comes from the triangle on the left, is equal to four, which is two squared. And then the second one gives me, okay, what is the height of that triangle, right? We gotta kind of figure that out. Okay, here's the interesting part. 
Now, if I add x plus h and h here, right, starting here and ending here, it's going to be give me x, but that's not the whole thing. I do need the whole thing. How do you find that? Okay, here's the trick. This part is the radius of the circle, which is 2. So to that, you need to add x minus h. You see the trick? Okay, that's kind of tricky, but I hope this will make sense. So it'll be x minus h plus 2 then, right, for the height of the triangle on the right-hand side. And then the base of the triangle, obviously, just like the other one, is going to be half of x. And the hypotenuse will be, guess what? The hypotenuse will be 3 because this time it is the radius of the semicircle. Right? Okay, cool. So the height is going to be half of x. And my hypotenuse is going to be 3. Therefore, 3 squared is 9. Okay, so this is my system of equations and I need to solve this. There are two variables. Now, if you go ahead and expand everything like crazy, it's going to be real crazy. So instead of expanding it, we got to be smart. Notice first that both equations have half of x squared, which means if I subtract the equations, I'll get rid of half of x squared, which is cool, right? So basically what I'm trying to do here is subtract these equations in that order. So when I do, these two terms will cancel out. And I'm going to be left with this expression minus h squared on the left-hand side. But instead of writing it, anyway, let me just not skip any steps. So let me go ahead and write this down. This squared minus h squared is going to be 9 minus 4, which is 5. So that's my equation. And you might be saying, like, we still have two variables. That's okay. But trust me, this is much simpler than what we started with. So let's go ahead and proceed a little bit. But before I do that, I don't want to mix x and h that much. So I want to be able to write this as x plus 2 minus h squared. And I want to square the x plus 2 as a quantity because it's going to look much simpler that way. OK, cool. So I'm going to treat it as an entity. So a minus b squared basically is what I'm trying to do here. a minus b squared. Uh, I mean a minus b quantity squared. a squared minus 2ab right, 2ab, plus b squared, which is h squared, minus h squared. Isn't that awesome? They're going to cancel out. Cool. Okay. So they're gone, and I'm left, left with this equation. Now, if you look at this equation very carefully, we do have x plus 2 in both of the terms, but we also have an h. And I, I'm thinking, like, it will make sense to solve for h at this point, right? So I want to isolate the term that has h in it. So why don't we just switch those around? So in other words, what I'm trying to say is, why don't we isolate this guy over here on the right-hand side and then bring the 5 over to the left-hand side and then switch sides? I hope that makes sense. And I hope it's not too complicated. Here we go. This is what I was trying to do. So basically, I swapped these terms, right? But I'm writing the h term on the left-hand side because it's easier to read from left to right. Okay. For some people at least, right? Okay, so what are we going to do next? Well, uh, as, as I said earlier, it would make sense if I solve for h, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 times x plus 2, which is 2x plus 4. So this is what I get. h is equal to this expression divided by 2x plus 4. And the 2x plus 4 basically comes from multiplying the 2 by the quantity x plus 2. Okay, cool. Now, this is really nice because we were able to get h by, I was going to say by itself. Yes, we did, but not that, but also in terms of x. So it's cool. Now, let's simplify this a little bit more. Uh, this is going to be x squared plus 4x plus 4. So if you simplify the constants, you're going to get x squared plus 4x minus 1 divided by 2x plus 4. Great. So I was able to get h in terms of x. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and plug it in into one of the equations so that we can solve for x. And remember, our goal is not to find h. We don't care about h. Nobody cares about h. Okay? We care about x. We want to find x. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if you remember, my second equation was h squared plus half of x squared is equal to 4. And in this equation, I can just go ahead and substitute this for h. And that's going to give me a real nice, no, not really. It's not going to be a nice equation because you'll see in a little bit, it's going to be kind of ugly, right? 
Well, it's going to be a quartic equation. But we're going to solve it. Don't worry. OK, cool. Now, what do we do from here? Well, we're going to square the x squared plus 4x minus 1, and then divide it by 2x plus 4 quantity squared, and then add this, make a common denominator, blah, 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 all that stuff, right? OK, so would you allow me to spare you all this trouble and give you the resultant quartic? I'm pretty sure you would do that. So with your permission, I'm going to go ahead and spare you the trouble and give you the equation. Here's our equation that results from this mess. OK, so it's going to look like this. 2x to the fourth power plus 12x cubed plus 2x squared minus 72x minus 63 is equal to 0. And isn't this beautiful? It's such a beautiful quartic equation. And guess what? The solutions of this quartic equation are very interesting because they are, first of all, they're very radical. Second, they look very similar. So they are kind of like conjugates. They have that kind of relationship. And we just recently talked about conjugates, right? Just in the previous video. Okay, cool. Now, again, without further ado, and you can explore this on your own too, of course, but without further ado, I'll give you the solution that makes sense. By the way, this equation is kind of interesting because if you look at, from Vieta's perspective, if you look at the product of the roots, you know that it's going to be E over A. In this case, it's a positive but E is negative, therefore it's going to be a negative. So, okay. So, in other words, there are four roots of this equation and their product is negative, which means, and our solution has to be positive, right? Wow, that's interesting. Why? Because it's a length. Come on. So, we have one positive and three negative solutions. Only the positive one counts. So, I'm going to give you that one right now. Ready, set, and go. So, the x value that results from here is going to look like the following x equals negative 3 plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 23 plus 12 times the square root of 2 and all of that divided by 2. Isn't that awesome? Okay, great. And if you approximate this value, this is going to be approximately 2.3682, which makes sense if you look at the picture again. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. This brings us to the end of it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow in 24 hours from now with another video. And the schedule will continue this way from now. All right. Until the next video, take care, be safe, and bye-bye.